How's it going everybody? This is Manny from Low Tech. Today we're looking at the RK2020. So for those of you that didn't know, the RK2020 is essentially a Odroid Go Advanced clone. Now the positives here is that one, it's still available. Two, you can get it for $60, which is a really good price. You do have some sacrifices here. It's only got one speaker and that one speaker is pretty terrible. But the highlight here is that you can run ArcOS on this device. And with the ArcOS 1.6 update, you're also getting really good Dreamcast performance. So if you're not looking to spend over $100 on one of these devices and you're looking for a budget one, this device may be it. So today we're going to look at what $60 plus ArcOS brings to the table. Before we get into the gameplay, if you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate it if you could hit that like and subscribe buttons for me. That way you'll help support the channel and also you won't miss out on any of this emulation goodness. Starting off with the Nintendo 64 emulation, one thing to keep in mind, you might need to bounce around with cores. One game may run great on one core, while another one may run terribly. So you may have to just find out which core runs the best, and then go with that. So for 1080, I'm running on the parallel core, and it's running pretty good. So with GoldenEye, I went with the parallel core as well, try to sacrifice a little bit on the graphics in exchange for speed. And with this game, it is a pretty demanding N64 game, so I didn't expect it to really make much of a difference. Mario Kart 64 runs very well on the parallel core. I had to play around with a couple of the core options before I got the performance you see here. I got this using the rice core. I also went with Rice for Super Mario 64, gave me the best performance. The RK2020 shouldn't have any issues with Game Boy Advance games, so I left the emulator and core settings on automatic. ArcOS utilizes the Drastic Emulator for DS emulation, so to get the results here, I set frame skip to automatic, and I set it to a value of 2.
I also use the same settings here for Mario Kart DS and the next game that we're going to show, New Super Mario Bros. One thing I do want to mention is that not every single DS game is going to run like the three I've shown here. You may get some that don't run as well, but having a device that costs $60 run DS like this is pretty cool. So I did do a video with Arc OS 1.6, the same version as you're seeing here on the RG351P and Dreamcast ran substantially better with the 1.6 update using Retro Run. So for all the Dreamcast games in this video, I'm also using Retro Run as the emulator and I have the core settings set to automatic. So to summarize the Dreamcast games, if you play Dreamcast and you have Arc OS, make sure you're on 1.6 and make sure you use Retro Run because it's going to almost blow your mind at how much better the performance is. PS1 games seem to have the easiest time running on a lot of these handheld devices that are becoming available. So. I didn't need to do anything special to get the performance you see here. I left everything set to auto and it's running great. For PSP emulation, ArcOS utilizes PPSSPP. To handle that, one thing you definitely want to do immediately is set frame skip to auto, set it to a value of 1, and make sure your resolution is down to native or 1x. As you can see, Secret Agent Clank is struggling a little bit. And that's just something that you're going to run into with PSP emulation on these devices that share this uh, RK3326 processor. Now we're going to take a look at some of the ports that are built in. This is not Amber ports. This is the actual ports that come pre-existing on ArcOS. Some of them do require that you provide some of the game files for. Not all of them, some of them are already there.
So at $60, this device, I feel, is a pretty good price and an excellent budget choice. You have to live with one less analog stick and one speaker, and that speaker being not that great. But if you're willing to live with that, I think you're getting a pretty good value, especially if you're willing to change out your OS and run Arc OS. And I think this is especially so if Dreamcast is a big deal to you and you're looking for your best budget Dreamcast option. This device paired with Arc OS is going to give you probably the best for $60. So for $60, it's really hard to complain about every little thing. I mean, the speaker does drive me nuts a little bit, but there are other things you could complain about. The buttons are a little bit loose. I mean, they work. They're not the greatest, but I just want to throw that out there. But hey, it's $60. It plays a whole lot of game consoles, for the most part, up to Dreamcast pretty decently. You also can throw in some older PC game ports, and you got a pretty complete little $60 device. One other side note, if you do want to get it for $60 or even less than that, you will have to get it from outside the United States, whether that be China or the UK, but you'll have to do it that way. If you try to go on Amazon, you can get them, but you're going to pay double, if not more, for it. So on that note, I'm going to call this video a wrap. I want to thank everybody for watching. I really hope it was enjoyable and informative, and I really hope that everybody has a great day.